challenges this Clemson team presents, but they also see this game as a tremendous opportunity, a chance to prove to everyone what they believe in that locker room, that they have gotten better every week and are perhaps positioned to play their best football of the year against the best opponent that they face. Head coach Willie Taggart told his team to seize the opportunity. He said, you don't ask for permission for greatness. You go out there and you take it. Bob? Well, his offense is going to be out there against maybe the single best position group in college football to start the game as Clemson won the toss. Deferred, as you would expect, so they're going to put that defensive line out there against DeAndre Francois to begin. And from a couple of yards deep, Anthony. Really good block in the back. Receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. From the end of the run. First down. And Brock for Florida State, the field position, because of the penalty, goes from bad to worse. Yeah. So backed up against your own end zone, it's going to be DeAndre Francois looking at this group. Yeah, that's a lot of fun as a quarterback, let me tell you. It's also a lot of fun, week number nine, to try to figure out <laughs> what more you could say, and that's why the Power Rangers came out. Because to me, that's pretty emblematic of this group and who they are. The fun they love to have, but everything is together. And that's a nightmare for any quarterback in DeAndre, especially with the group up front that he's got that has struggled to block this season. A run it with Cam Akers on first down. And Akers had his best game of the season, a two-touchdown game, 98 yards last week in the win over Wake Forest. And not to see Trey Lamar involved in the action. First, second, third leading tacklers are all at the second level. And that, too, a testament to the big men up front, the keep 57, the keep 34, and keep number 11 clean all afternoon. Francois with the quick kick. Juan Murray. Nowhere to go. Bottled up inside the 10, back to the original line of scrimmage, sets up third down at 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven Tigers flying to the football. They know who they are. They know exactly the strength of this group, and, and they got a pretty good feel that Florida State's going to want to play this game on the perimeter. And how do you defeat that? You do it by incredible effort and hustle and pursuit, which you saw on your screen on second down. Same formation flip to the far side of the field. Clemson shows blitz. He'll rush only three. Francois, incomplete. He threw it behind Murray, so it's a three and out to start for FSU. That's about as bad a start as you can have if you're Willie Tagger. Number one, you return the kick to the 15, take a knee. Give yourself any opportunity against, against this group. Number two, and you try to throw an easy game of pitch and catch just out there to the perimeter. And the first one goes for Zippo, and the third one falls incomplete, and that's a three and out. So can Logan Tyler change field position from the back of his own end zone? Pretty good kick to midfield, forcing a fair catch right at the 50-yard line for Amari Rogers. But when you have a true freshman quarterback that has this much talent, it's apparent to everyone as soon as he shows up. And it was apparent to a few quarterbacks that were on the roster that decided to transfer as soon as Trevor Lawrence shined in the spring game. Hunter Johnson ended up at Northwestern. The first four games, he shared time with Kelly Bryant, but then it became obvious to all involved that Trevor Lawrence was the clear-cut, most talented quarterback for Clemson. Kelly Bryant's gone, so a handful of quarterbacks have left this Clemson program, taking a backseat to the true freshman. Travis Etienne, you know, the heart of the Knowles defense, moving the pile on first down for a gain of four. And chance to call the Clemson spring game. Chris Fowler and I were up there, and you heard it there. It, it took you about 60 seconds on campus, and everybody says it's just different. I mean, he's just different in every way. He's 6'6", he's got a rocket arm, he's got a humility and a poise that are not normal for freshmen. He's a different cat. Play action and a laser beam right at the first down marker. And Hunter Renfro's got it to the 39-yard line. And we're going to document this throughout. And, and you saw a couple little quick screens and quick passes from DeAndre Francois, who's got a good arm. This kid has got an arm that's second to none. It's he and Tua in all of college football. And you see how fast that ball gets from point A to point B. Many times, receivers aren't catching it. And the ball is catching them. Etienne up the middle. And of a yard. Hunter Renfro is awesome. He's been awesome for college football the last two, three years. 
Bob, I can't tell you the number of games you start to watch and he's getting knocked over by the football. I mean, he runs these option routes, especially on third down, and he turns around and he's like a poor catcher that's just trying to get his body in front of these missiles that are often pushing him ahead of the first down marker. Little play action fake, taking a shot towards T. Higgins, incomplete. Now that is the one area you're going to see Trevor get better. That's the one area where Tua, in year number two, is better than he is down the field. And I charted every one of his throws last week, just one of five, 20 plus. Anything underneath that, it is on the shoulder pad. It is as those guys come out of break, but that deep ball, that's an area that you're going to see Trevor progress in his career. A little more air, a little more opportunity for the speedsters down the field. A big early third down for this Florida State defense as Clemson began at midfield. FSU shows blitz. Here they come. A bullet up the seam way up over the head of Justin Ross. That's a great hold for the Florida State defense when you give that offense field position right at the 50-yard line and force a punt. Yeah, that's a nice job on the back end of Florida State defensively just getting into the lane. Okay, as phenomenal as Trevor is physically, these are many new experiences. And playing in this place where the program has not had a ton of success, a nice job there of just getting in his vision. Any quarterback, and especially a young one, wants a clean lane to throw through. And that time on that skinny post, just enough color forced him to throw high and wide. Not enough players on the field for Florida State. Florida State calls a timeout on And here's what Clemson is trying to accomplish today, the first time to win back-to-back -back games at Doe Campbell Stadium. They have never been able to do that before. And they have a chance after the Florida State timeout to pin the Knolls deep. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart, Allison Williams here in Tallahassee. And Will Spires will try and kick it inside the 10-yard line. An end over end kick. Into the end zone. A big break for Florida State. So DeAndre Francois will have the football, Brock, out at his own 25-yard line. As tough a kid as you're going to find in this position. Florence has got one of the most gifted arms. Just the mental and physical toughness of DeAndre Francois is what resonates. He has been hit so often in his career at Florida State, and, and a ton this year. Is This is the first week, and congratulations to the Seminoles. The first week they've started the same offensive line back-to-back -back weeks. It took to nearly November. But DeAndre, do not question his toughness. Got to step up in the pocket. Got to protect the football. But his durability off the charts. Pardon me, starting at the 20. And they'll try and begin this drive on the ground with a counter to Cam Akers. He picks up two. Extra Lawrence is there to make the stop. That's what's so good about this group. You got guys that can rush off the edge. You got the heavyweight right in the middle that is so hard to move. Just such a dominant force who all decided to come back to school for one more run. Quarterback draw. Francois picks up three more. It'll be third down and five. Again, the stop made by Dexter Lawrence. Swa wants to play with tempo, third down and five. Shot to the sideline, right at the first down marker, and that is past the sticks. Akers makes the reception, picks up seven, and a big third down conversion for the Knowles. And here's the tempo you need. Any tempo coach is going to tell you the same thing. The only way you get it going is to see those chains moving. Big third down conversion. Quick game again, out to the edge. Akers again. No game. Yeah, Brent uh, is going to provide the juice. He always does. <laughs> he certainly does. <laughs> yes, I think he'd still like to play. His seventh year at Clemson as the defensive coordinator, and what being his get-back coach has to be a physical job. <laughs> Francois out of the pocket. Sliding catch is made by Murray. That 
that's a first down. And I think the key there is what you said, stepping up. Even though it was lateral, and that rush comes off his right side, and you're going to see it all afternoon. When DeAndre is going, what they're really trying to instruct him is to either step laterally or step up into that pocket and make plays with that really electric arm he has. Snap goes over the head of Francois. All the way back inside the 20-yard line. Talk about short-circuiting a drive that had some promise. Murray covers it up. A loss of 23. And flags down after the play was over. And yeah, that was going to be a run play. And the center, Alec Everly, is trying to get to that block. And he knows blocking the Dexter Lawrences. He's got to get right on those guys because if he doesn't. The play was over. That's supposed to be like conduct. Number three, offense. Half the distance to the goal. The down counts. Say it out. Talk about going from bad to worse. That's going to put you back at the 10-yard line if you're Florida State. So Everly just airmails a snap. And you saw there was really no chance. He's not even looking. He's still trying to figure out some of that numbers game on what may have been an RPO. And instead, it whizzes right by him in a negative play. Made worse by Cam Akers, who just loses his cool in the confrontation with Kayvon Wallace. All right, you're Walt Bell, offensive coordinator for Florida State. Where on the sheet does it address second down and 43? That's when you turn to the receiver coach and say, you like anything here? <laughs> oh, boy, at the 10-yard line. I'll run it with Trapez Patrick, and he'll pick up about three. So now it's just buy some real estate for your punt group and don't turn it over deep in your own end. Hey, this is pretty cool, though. Watch Cam Akers, the running back. Not cool to get a penalty, and no coach is going to like it. But Kayvon Wallace is talking a little noise to DeAndre, and who comes and has his back? Cam Akers, former quarterback himself. I like that. Don't come and talk noise to my quarterback. We always think it's the big guys that got to protect the quarterback. That's not the case. Running back receivers can absolutely do the same. Gabe Neighbors makes a 12-yard catch. So now we'll see what type of field position Clemson ends up with as Amari Rogers is at his own 35-yard line to receive this punt. And he'll take it right there. And get brought down right there. Good coverage on special teams. By the summer. The rubble. His recruiting letters strewn about like garbage. His family left homeless. But thankfully, due to an NCAA approved GoFundMe account, $108,000 has been raised for him and his mother, Sharon Duncan, to help rebuild their home and their lives. And it is amazing to see him out here working with this team, committing himself to football. And he does so with his mother's blessing and encouragement that she will be okay. Well, Michael devastated the panhandle and part of the Gulf Coast. And to help victims of Hurricane Michael, please go to redcross.org slash ESPN. And you can be a part of helping out a lot of folks like Janaris Robinson and his family who lost everything. It's a false start. Tremaine Ankrum, the right tackle, backed up. Number 73, offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's right tackle, Ankrum, on, on the false start, the early movement. How many times, Bob, in our career are doing this together? We heard coaches say the players are so much more resilient as we are. These young men are so resilient. They're the ones that are just incredible leaders. And mom, they're urging her son on to go out there and do what you love to do. And what a force he has been in that locker room and in this community. Blitz coming on second down. Bullet to the sideline to Amari Rogers. Lawrence felt the heat. Picked up five yards. 
first. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, that was a blitz getting again right into the vision. Hard at times for a guy that's six foot six, and you don't think you can impact that vision, but you can. You can get in those lanes in all different varieties, whether it was in coverage and lost third down, or that time a pressure look. Probably worth noting, no starting center. Fasinelli is out. Concussion uh, symptoms. Cervenka, the right guard, sliding over to center. And looking at another FSU blitz. Lawrence off his back foot, has to throw it away. Marvin Wilson in the face of Trevor Lawrence. He sure was, and there was some pressure, and if you're going to pressure, you're going to play man behind it. And look at it. Look at the window of opportunity. You tell me. Where, where are you going here? And I love that. I love that look to say, you know what? I know you're super gifted, and you were 52-2 and two as a starter, and you're the number two recruit in America, but we got to trust our guys. And that pressure up front, a big part of it, but that man-to-man -man coverage, if they can do that this afternoon, there's enough horses up front between Burns and crew to get it done. It'll be great field position for Florida State. Spires off the side of his foot. And where will they mark it out? The official on the near side of the field, you can see him making his way through everyone on the Florida State bench. In Clemson territory at the Tigers 49-yard line, a 14-yard punt. Allison Williams, great field position for Florida State. And it gets better. Oh, it goes right through the hands of Murray. That looked like a good pass from DeAndre Francois. And a missed opportunity now, Allison? Yeah, guys, but I have the opportunity here to be with Garnet and Gold. It's a tradition that goes back 20 years since 1998. They're members of the Baptist Collegiate Ministry. I'm going to talk to them and try to avoid the glitter here, so I'm not wearing this the rest of the game like they are. I have one question, Gold. What takes longer, to get the glitter on or to get it all off? It takes longer to get it on. It takes about an hour on and 20 off. Really? What's the trick to getting this off of your body? Uh, so we go back behind the shed and we just hose off, use some Dawn dish soap, and scrub it as much as we can. All right, and how long after a game do you still show remnants of the gold? Uh, say up to a week. Up to a week. I yeah, still a little gold. Wear your team spirit all week. Yes. Tough, toughest place to get it out of. Ears, teeth? Ears. It's in there forever. Oh, boy. That's what I wanted to know that. Can people tell who you are then? Because I know this is like an anonymous thing until you graduate and the next two are anointed. So do people kind of figure out who you guys are because of the, the evidence? Yeah, sometimes people will like call it out and be like, oh, hey, and like, like say our name. But um, sometimes they have no idea. We've known them for years. So it's pretty funny. What's the best part? Uh, just cheering on the team and being part of the game day every week. They're famous, guys. People were lined up for photographs before the game. Well, Francois loses the ball on third down and nine. So Florida State does nothing with the field position. They're going to have to punt it away and see if they can pin Clemson deep. And you see the pressure. You just can't live in third and nine. And that first down drop, and it absolutely was. You see just the, the whole crew, and including even secondary members, getting involved in the blitz. Tanner Muse, I love it. The shoulder pad right into the belly of Francois there. But that drop by Murray on first down. Those are the opportunities. You only get so many good pitches to hit against this defense. And that was a swing and miss. Called that a fumble, although it looked like DeAndre Francois' arm may have been coming forward. Only cost Florida State about five yards. And Logan Tyler forces a fair catch inside the 20-yard line. 35-yard punt tonight on ABC, a Big 12 battle. It's number six, Texas, in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. You're on ABC and live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Is Texas worth their national ranking, as far as you're concerned? Yeah, I, I think this has a lot to do with beating Oklahoma, you know, who was just absolutely rolling and unstoppable. They're going to face adversity as so many ranked teams in the top 20, like this Clemson team going out on the road in conference. Dangerous things happen. We see it every year. A rollout for Lawrence on first down. Renfro makes a diving catch for a gain of four. Renfro's a guy you're going to see get an opportunity at the next level. Just love that guy. Now, Trevor Lawrence is the most skilled. Renfro's going to lose every way in. He's going to lose every 40 time, but he's going to win every chance he gets in one-on-one -on -one situations. Maybe it feasts. 
Eastern met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Caleb Brooks in the middle of the pile up. It's an excellent job. The big guys up front in Florida State now, these first two series, they have a little bit of pride. And that's a real big fella right there. But they've got a little bit of pride on their side when they're going up against what they are you know, with the other defense. It gets nothing but talked about all the time. You see the big freshman Cooper that was running off. But staying square and giving yourself a chance in these third and five plus situations to, again, look at the coverage. Face mask to face pass, man to man coverage. Delay blitz. And a catch made for a first down by T. Higgins. Out to the 35, he picked up 13. Renfro's a guy that is around the hash marks, running lots of option routes. But on the perimeter, their boundary receiver is Higgins. And they've had some good ones at Clemson. They just keep growing them up. And Mike Williams was a top 10 pick. This is who he profiles to in a few years. A beautiful job of using his hands to get out there in a well-placed third and six conversion. Reaction. Back shoulder. Incomplete. The intended receiver looked like good coverage from Kyle Myers. You just watch Clemson Kyle through the Myers years, and they just continue to put the same kind of body type, the same athleticism into these positions. And I do. Mike Williams grew, and he was bigger and a little bit stronger, but it's the same thought. You get those one-on-one -on -one situations into the short side of the field. It's slant routes. It's fade routes. It's post routes. A ton of them, but, man, massive amount of opportunity in one-on-one -on -one spots. Out of the pocket again. Extending the play right to the 40 yard line and toe tapping and making the reception is Amari Rogers. It'll be third and five. And if you're a corner today and you're thinking, well, this guy's getting out of the pocket, I've got a little bit of separation, he's certainly not going to be able to throw it and close. <laughs> the air yards, I guess he is. It's almost the way that folks used to talk about John Elway. Yeah. But when you think about comparable arm strength early in a college career, he throws fastballs. Third down and five. Blitz. Takes it off to Feaster. Bottled up by the nose. It's a loss of four. Yeah, there was no chance there. And I know why you, you call that. You think it's a man-to-man -man coverage, right? You've seen it already on the previous third down. So if we can get our linemen out in front of this screen, then you can have some success. But you don't fool the defensive linemen who've been all over it this afternoon. A nice job by Brooks, who beats the blockers out front. Simply nowhere to go. Four State defensively showed up. And we saw this against Miami a couple weeks ago. And this is what Allison was talking about in the open, that this group is getting better and developing and growing in some confidence. And that's three really good series against a dynamic offense. And the first tackle for loss this season for Walvinsky M.A. And forces the punt. It's going to take a bounce. Into traffic. The deep. Shoes and Brock York, Allison Williams back in Tallahassee. Where so far the defense for Florida State, Brock has been the story because Clemson has had terrific field position and they have not been able to get inside the Florida State 39 yard line. Feels a little bit like conference play, doesn't it? And, and you know your opponent very well. And the Florida State crew that, group that is uber talented, whose defensive guys are sick and tired of hearing about this number two team in the country and are rising to the cage like these guys are. Francois, jump ball, intended for Murray, and that's incomplete. Once again, just pressure right in the face. Get used to it. If you're DeAndre Francois, you laid your head down in bed last night, and you repeated to yourself, I'm going to get hit, and it's okay. I'm going to get hit, and it's okay. I'm going to get hit, and it's okay. <laughs> because you are, and it's going to come from everywhere. And that time, Christian Wilkins just absolutely embarrasses Mike Arnold, the right guard. And this is a group up front that is troubled and has been troubled all season to find consistency. Did that work for Brock Ewer no, back in the day? never. But I still find myself doing it at times. <laughs> Second down and 10. That's Murray in motion. And a man to the top side of your screen. Instead, it's Murray on the bubble screen. And he fights his way forward for a few yards. It'll bring up third down and six. But it's the diversification of this defensive line for Clemson is just so unique, and they're, they're going to lose them all. Now, they got some young guns, and they're going to grow up and get better. But when you've got the run stuffer and you've got Wilkins and Lawrence inside along with the pass rush outside, 
There's just not one part of the group that you can contain and feel good about. Francois on the slant right through the hands of Keith Gavin. That's the second good throw in as many series for DeAndre Francois, where his wide receivers did not make a play for him. Yeah, and you can't have it. I mean, you just you just cannot afford that. Not when you're trying to block those guys and you call the right play. And the first down play action pass was a huge one to Murray because it nearly puts you in field goal range on the previous drive. And that time, a third down to get your tempo going. Beautifully thrown by DeAndre, just right through the hands of Gavin. Good kick from Logan Tyler driving Amari Rogers with a fair catch all the way back to his own 31 yard line. Week 8 Monday Night Football. It's Tom Brady and the Patriots in Buffalo to take on the Bills. 815 Eastern, 515 Pacific on ESPN. Also simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish, available on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Our coverage will begin with Monday Night Countdown at 6. That's a matchup Mr. Brady has feasted upon. But if those guys, Tom Brady, or you mentioned John Elway earlier, watch these young phenoms. This kid that played 54 high school games, won his last 41 consecutive leg. And just look at a guy at six foot six that can just spin it like a few others. ETN up the middle. And he picks up five. Clemson came into this game without their center, Justin Felsinelli, and now they are without their right guard, Sean Pollard. He remains in the locker room. He had some sort of like a soft cast, some extra support on that right hand. They were cutting it off and then took him in the locker room to work on it further. So right now, two backups on the line for Clemson. Felsinelli and Pollard combined for 43 starts in their careers. See how that impacts the rest of this game. Play action. Right up the seam, in stride, it's Ross, the true freshman. Waiting for a blocker and getting dragged down inside the Florida State 25-yard line. That was a beautiful little throw. A run-pass option there. You run on first down, you suck up the linebackers and safeties, and it's got to go right over the head. Right over the head of the safety Samuels there. That can't be one of those rocket shots. It's got to be over the head, but enough velocity. And the catch around, excuse me, it was Westbrook, the safety, that tried to get in that lane, but he couldn't. Justin Ross picks up 41. Play clock was winding down. Or check that. The team in America had outscored their opponents collectively in the first quarter, 52 to 9, this season. Coming into today, Florida State holds them scoreless. A good field position to start off the second quarter for the Tigers. Lawrence. Down the sideline for T. Higgins, and that might have been a throwaway as much as it was a shot for Higgins. Kyle Myers there in coverage again. Yeah, there's no question. That ball wanted to go to the field on a little bubble screen to the running back, get people out front. But we've seen this on a few occasions. Trevor has, too. These seminal defenders are a step ahead, whether it's the D lineman, whether it's the linebackers getting out in front of some of these plays, making life a little more difficult on the freshman. Well protected. That ball batted in the air and it falls incomplete. Frederick Jones gets a pass defense at the line. Now it's third down and ten. Yeah, if you're not going to get home, then you know, put your paw right in front of the fastball. Or maybe your forearm. And that will leave a mark tomorrow, I guarantee it. Because that thing's something coming about 60 miles an hour. But Jones and Christmas and Burns and Ame, they've all been difference makers on this front four in the first quarter. Frederick Jones. The nephew of Marvin, a Hall of Famer here at Florida State. Third down and ten. Five-man rush. Lawrence floating one down the sideline. Jump ball for Ross, and it's incomplete. Well defended by Asante Samuel. That's big-time recruit on big-time recruit. Two guys that are as good as anybody in America last year. And that is, a, that is beautiful coverage there on a guy in Ross that is you know, shown us before. He can go up and get it. This one, high school. He was the number one recruit out of the state of Alabama. Not bad in the spring either. I think Asante knew a thing or two. Got right up into his body and forced that incompletion in this field goal attempt. Officially from 40. Greg Hugel. No good. Flag down after the field goal attempt. 
And did Hugo go down? And is that the penalty? Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Number 26. Defense. Half a distance to the goal. Automatic first down. That's Jonathan Vickers. And a mistake you cannot afford if you're Florida State. Well, that's a turnover. It won't show up on the stat sheet as a turnover, but that's a turnover. And that's as obvious as it gets. You have to get out of that kicker's opportunity to swing his leg, leg, leg and land. And you see the special teams coach. That's two occasions. He got yelled at earlier for burning a timeout on a punt. That is much worse and much more problematic. Double numbers. That is Asante Samuel. So right after Asante Samuel got the pass defense in the end zone, the true freshman makes the unmakeable mistake, and it's a first down in the red zone. Watch the bottom of the field if you get a one-on-one -on -one with Higgins. They'll run it instead with ETN. Almost broke free, instead dragged down. At the 10-yard line, a gain of a couple. Adonis Thomas was able to get a hold of the jersey of Travis ETN. And ETN had a hard time getting going. Credit those lanes being a little bit smaller up front than what ETN has felt all season long. I and mean, I think Dabo is saying you got to run through those tackles. Exactly right. You got to get up there and hit it. This Florida State guys came to play today. Dabo knows it. We recruited some of them and tried to get them to Clemson. So you don't have any time to hesitate. You may have against Wake Forest, but not against this crew. It has got to be explosive in north and south. Only five carries for 13 yards so far for Travis ETN. Came in averaging 8.2 yards per carry. Number two in America. A rollout here for Lawrence. Low throw, scooped up by Renfro. The seven-yard line, third down and four. It's a heck of a catch. That's a rub route. Mr. Watson had a pretty famous uh, game when he played on that little rub route. I think, right now. I think, if I remember right, Hunter Renfro has had some success in the past with a pick play in this area of the field. It's not a pick, it's a rub. Yeah. So says the bitter old quarterback. Third down, Huge. and a long four, close to five. And he's got the one-on-one -on -one if he wants it to Higgins now to the top of the field. Lawrence into the end zone. The jump ball is there for T. Higgins, and he boxes out the defender, and he's got a seven-yard touchdown. And the true freshman knows he cost his team a score. Yep. You only have so many opportunities offensively and defensively, and drop passes have killed the Seminoles offensively. And then defensively, when you get off the field, well, you're just going to have some of these matchups. And A.J. Westbrook is doing all he can, not a perfectly thrown ball, but enough to allow Higgins to extend those long arms, those monster hands, and put seven on the board for Clemson. There's a true freshman kicker, B.T. Potter, in for the point after. Sneaks it inside the right upright. Clemson, on the strength of the Samuel penalty, scores first. That's a Wake Forest team that got drubbed last week by Florida State, 38-17, after they had at one point a 10-0 lead and had 11 consecutive possessions that were scoreless here at Doe Campbell, and now they're getting beat up by Louisville. I got two words for you. Lamar Jackson. First and 10 for Florida State. Looking to bounce back. Akers powers his way, or check that Patrick powers his way for four yards out to the 29. And you got to commit to some of that. You're, you're, you're not going to find explosive plays. This run game has struggled. was a little better against Wake Forest, but nowhere near where it's going to have to be in the years to come for Willie. But you've got to keep that group honest by at least committing to some of that run. Patrick again. And it's going to be third down. There's a flag thrown on the far side of the field. Illegal formation. More than four players in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, none of the three receivers to the field. Not one of them got himself on the line of scrimmage. And these are things that drive Willie Nuts. He told us yesterday, as many of these coaches do, but especially head coaches that call plays, you gotta execute. And then the things you can control. Especially the pre-snap penalties or timeouts or guys on the field. And then ultimately, when there's a pitch and catch, when there's a slant route or an over route that you catch 10 out of 10 in practice, you then got to do it when the lights go on. Bad news for Florida State. They lose the five yards. The good news, they get the down back. So it's second down and 11. 
No deep safeties for Clemson. And Swa delivers a strike right at the first down marker. It's Amari and Terry. And he moves the chains. Guys, we've seen Francois take a few licks throughout this game. We knew that would be a part of the game. And the thing that I love about him, more than any quarterback I've covered, is like he feeds off that physicality. He told us as much yesterday. Pump fake here. Pump fakes again. And there he is, getting out on the edge. Well, if you're going to play, play against this Clemson defense with any kind of enthusiasm, yep. you better feed on physicality because, Brock, as you said, he will get hit today time and time again. Yeah, and no shots down the field in that first quarter. You know, Willie said, we got to win this game on the perimeter, and that's fine. And they've tried to throw the quick screens to no avail. I think eventually here, you've just got to say, we've got to take five or seven, and we've got to throw the ball and push it down the field. But that is the one area on the perimeter that they felt like they had an opportunity in a matchup chance. I think in these next 10 minutes or so, you're going to see some shots down the field. Off play action here to the sideline, incomplete. Trayvon Mullen is there in coverage. He's getting here both to play Venables. And he was blocking. And we saw this a couple times last week, too. These Florida State receivers are just down the field. And there's a lot of gray area that Brent Venables is trying to figure out with this offense, too. And so are the young Seminoles. And the young freshman there is just out downfield walking, not even looking for the ball. And the crowd reacts, thinking it's pass interference. But you got to run around. Third down and nine. Blitz. It's picked up. Lobbed to the sideline. Should have been intercepted. No heat on that pass from DeAndre Francois. And Kayvon Wallace dropped it. And I think part of the reason there, you've got to see the safeties. And you're expecting a pressure look, as you said. They bring six. What usually comes with pressure? Man to man. But not that case. They play zone to the field. They play cloud coverage. And DeAndre just assumes with that pressure, well, I got man-to-man -man coverage. And does not see the zone coverage and the safety. And Kayvon, it should have had that interception. Flag thrown before the punt snap. Any coordinator worth his worth or a QB coach tells you as a quarterback, scan the secondary first. Okay, they will tell you pressure packages, coverages more than anything else. But then post-snap, you got to see it as well. And that time, he did not. And Venable throws a lot at you. He is a fun one. He's got an immense amount of talent to work with and such a variety of skill sets. But Brent does such a terrific job coordinating you like There's no foul for a full start. Fourth down. Flag picked up, so we'll start again. And once again, the heat will be on Logan Tyler, the punter. We'll see if he can change field position. Ari Rogers inside his own 15-yard line. Breaks the first tackle. Gets to the edge. Finally lassoed down all the way out. At the Clemson 42-yard line. A 28 Williams. Really good field position again for Clemson. They have dominated field position here in the first half, and they've got the 7-0 lead. Trevor Lawrence keeps it. Looks back down the sideline. Underthrown and incomplete. Intended for Tavian Feaster on the wheel route. That's a couple different times now. That throw down the field. Right, that, that's the one thing. That the fastball is absolutely there. And for Trevor, I think sometimes when you throw the football so hard, and he has tremendous touch. I mean, he's got every gift that you want. But it is those throws down the field of just really still ripping it. And you can still rip it down the field with touch. That's the biggest step in his game to grow. Choice for a yard and a half. These guys up front doing a good job. There is no Falsinelli. And Pollard's battling injury, but these guys can feel it. Cooper can feel it, the big freshman. We saw Frederick Jones with the big play. We've seen Marvin Wilson hit Trevor Lawrence. And this defensive line is doing their part. Special teams, offense, not so much. Now on third down, can they get that guy going? Number 99, right in the middle of your picture, Brian Burns. 23 career sets. Lawrence, low throw. It is a catch for a first down. 
T. Higgins got his arms under the football at the Florida State 45 to pick up 11. Wow, those arms and those hands have been something else today. Touchdown reception. He sees the fastball low and away, and yeah, I think he does. And maybe just as importantly, it's his elbows and forearms that he's trying to squeeze that football. Trevor Lawrence wants to go quickly. Another rifle shot to the sideline, and this time Renfro could not haul it in with one hand. Fifteen schools, all on one network. A new place to call home. It's the ACC Network, and it's on the way in August of 2019. I mentioned Burns earlier. It was this game. Four and a half tackles for loss, a couple sacks, a couple forced fumbles a year ago. And he played such a force, and Hyatt doing a nice job of left tackle against him today. Here's ETN into the secondary for the first time. And that looks to be good enough for a first down right at the line to gain. And they'll say without measurement, it is a Clemson first down. Big time block by Hyatt right in front of him. And I think that conversation with his head coach, put your foot in the ground and go, man. Not against these guys today, not in this building, not where we've never won back-to-back -back games. Mitch Hyatt doing a nice job against Burns, pass blocking, and that time setting up ETN as Tim and Paul, he comes around, creates a lane. ETN again. This time he's running through on tackles. 15 more. I don't know where middle linebacker Dontavious Jackson was going on that play, but he went the wrong way. And in so doing, created an amazing open gap that ETN is saying, okay, finally, now I, now, now this is Clemson football. This is what we have done all season long, pacing for 40 rushing touchdowns as they did in 2017, which is just an amazing number as a team. Screen, T. Higgins. Dragon tacklers inside the 15. To about the 13-yard line. That ball gets from point A to point B on these quick passes. Look at it. Look at the miles per hour. I measured on 1.3 seconds to cover 90 feet two weeks ago against Wake Forest. That's 61 miles per hour. Check my math out there, all you mathematicians. <laughs> but it is, it is just truly remarkable, whether it's on tape or as you sit up here in the press, press box and watch it. Quickly out to Amari Rogers. He gets to the end. He uses the stiff arm. First and goal for Clemson at the three. And it just doesn't look like much, right? It's a quick screen. Everybody in college football and high school runs a quick screen. But when you can throw it from the far hash outside the numbers and Amari can have his eyes up because it's put right on his shoulder pad in an instant, it just allows you to break tackles. Look at it. You don't have to worry about it. Most guys are catching that turning, feeling the contact. But because that ball is on him in a second, it gives him a chance to break those tackles. That's eye-opening when you put up miles per hour numbers of all those NFL quarterbacks. And he's five or six miles per hour faster as a true freshman. But you see it. This time a throw with touch at the front pylon for the touchdown to Higgins. They did a beautiful job on the previous possession, getting him into a one-on-one -on -one with the safety. They do so again. I mean, those are just mismatches, and it doesn't take a senior to figure out. A true freshman could say, yeah, my guy's pretty good, and he's a whole lot better to, than a safety. And it was Nasruddin that time. It was Westbrook on the previous possession. It is what they do, man. They play with tempo. They get their guys into the matchups and the one-on-one -on -one situations, and then ultimately, well, they win a whole lot more than the defense does. Good to see Greg Hugel able to get back out there after he was roughed. He knocks the extra point through. Two touchdown lead for Clemson here in Tallahassee midway through the second. Possible unexpected outcomes this year. And Brock, there's no one left on Clemson's schedule. That should at this point be a real threat. Still in all, though, you have to play all these games through, and we've seen them upset before. I don't think they've got the margin this year. Not with Notre Dame, uh, not with an ACC that's a little bit down with some of their peers. But I will circle at Boston College in a couple weeks, as you saw last night against the Hurricanes. That team can play some defense. It'll be a touchback for Florida State. Let's go back to Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. Direct TV, more for your college football thing. ACC Coastal leader UVA hosting North Carolina. Bryce Perkins to Joe Reed over the top. A 27-yard connection, 14-7 Virginia in the second. Bob? All right, Cassidy, thanks very much. 
has Clemson and Florida State in the ACC as well, and it's a two-touchdown lead for Clemson. How big is this possession Huge. now for the Knolls? Huge. And you got the ball. Clemson deferred. You just not got anything going. I mean, hard to do anything. So the drops have played a role, staying on schedule. And the Clemson offense that has found a little bit of rhythm on the other side. You just can't give the ball back to. Francois, little check down, getting loose is Nyquan Murray. Spins all the way out to the 41-yard line. Florida State feels like they are so close to getting something going on offense. Receivers coach David Kelly telling his guys, you got to run your routes harder. You got to be physical and get separation. DeAndre Francois talking to each receiver about the coverages they're seeing and where he needs them to be. Well, right now he needs his protection to hold up, and instead he takes off and picks up five on the scramble. I don't really know how you miss Dexter Lawrence. I mean, he's about 330 pounds. He's sitting right between center and guard, and both of them decide not to block. And good thing DeAndre is nimble. Pretty good protection this time, and a strike to the sideline right at the first down marker. And it looks as if Tamari and Terry came back to the 50-yard line, so he's a yard short. So here's a third down and one. Again, they want to play with tempo. They have to get set. Cam Akers almost broke free. Picks up the first down. That was a better job by Minshew in the LRB right in the middle of that line. A double team there, and you can see Cam saying, if could break that one arm tackle, those two big boys did enough on that third and one. And I like Allison's point in the receiver coach, too. You've got to just play physical. Everybody does. They play top speed against one of the top teams in the country. Clemson spends a timeout on defense. Continued Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. And this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you to Allstate. You got a play action shot down the field for me here? I call him. Well, I, uh, Tamari and Terry has got to get a ball. One of the next three plays has got to be something pushed down the field. Here's a first down in plus territory. There's the pump fake. And there's the shot to the sideline over the head of Nyquan Murray. For a second, it looked like they wanted to fire one down the seam. Instead, the intermediate route thrown by Francois, and he misses it. He does. And, that, and that's one you got to get. What was it? Chip Kelly, week number one, way back when, said explosive plays. 16 plus yards in your passing game, and that was. It's going to be 15 plus, 16 plus in your passing game. You hit one of those, you score 45% of the time. If you don't get an explosive, especially against elite, against elite defenses, you're not going to get a sustained drive score. That's Cam Akers in motion. They'll run it with him. Driving his legs and being driven back by Trayvon Mullen. So the corner to the near side makes a tackle after a gain of only two, and it's another big third down. When you throw it on first down there, you often can then put yourself a little bit behind the sticks, and that's a throw that DeAndre missed. You, know, you, you can talk about a couple of the drops, but you just don't have margin when you play a crew like this on the other side. It's top-ranked in nearly every statistical category, and the pitch is there to hit. You've got to hit it. Francois hoists one down the sideline. Flag down. Francois was hit. They blitz DeAndre Francois. Austin Bryant provided the pressure, and there's the call. The passer, number 12, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. We talked about the toughness of DeAndre and the number of shots he has taken. And that call is going to be because he was hit below the waist. Kayvon Wallace drew the flag. And Jim Blackwood, who was our referee in the booth, longtime supervisor and on-field referee in the WAC in the Mountain West. What's the rule there, and what are the officials looking for? On that one, they're looking for the low block. That's the rule they put in a couple of years ago, just like the NFL. It's the low block on the quarterback. If you look at it, you'll see him go low. Dangerous at the knees of the quarterback. That's a big break for Florida State. Keeps the drive alive. Akers, jump cut, lost the ball in the backfield. And he got it back. 
So here's one of the challenges I have on that. I totally get it when that hit is hit the knees. You're asking these defenders to not target, right? You've asked them to change their strike zone, so you do not want to come to the head or neck. So you can see Kayvon here. Where does he hit him? Where does his shoulder in his helmet hit him? His contact is to the waist. His contact to me right there, Jim, is to the waist rather than now. The impact with the, his lower body in force does roll into his legs. But what are you asking these guys to do at full speed? It's what I hear from all my defender friends. You don't want forcible contact to the head or neck. And if I target the waist and it just so happens I fall into his legs, what do you then want me to do? It's a fair debate. Francois wide open in the flat, another dropped ball. Cam Akers drops it, so it's going to be third down and long. So what do you say then, Jim, to those defenders that feel like they're stuck in the strike zone? I think in this situation, he just went low. He hit him in the way he said, but then he catches it. And they, the rule is to protect the quarterback. They want to protect the quarterback. And I get that. And if I'm a quarterback and I'm an offensive coordinator, do you know what I do? I also devise a scheme that a safety can't come 15 yards full steam ahead and unload on me. And that's what Dabo's saying. He's like, hey, I'm hitting him in the waist. He's at his waistband. Between the waist and the chest is our target zone. And full speed, it is hard to do. Third down and 15. Flags everywhere. This is going to go against Florida State again. Full start. Number 72. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. I don't think Willie's a note taker, right? You see a lot of head coaches. I think when you're a play caller, you don't have time necessarily to take notes. But if he did, he'd have about six or seven of these notes. And you see the confusion there. Everly, for some reason, thinks his quarterback is under center. He had been under center all day, son. But if he took notes, he would have roughing the kicker, false start, bad snap, fumbles, drops. I mean, it's just been, unfortunately, against a good opponent. You just not give yourself a chance. This might be a challenge just to get in the field goal range. Francois, floater up the seam. He was hit as he threw, and it's intercepted by Trey Lamar. The middle linebacker to the sideline. Stays in bounds and returns it inside the 40. All the way down near the Florida State 30-yard line. Christian Wilkins pressured Francois. And just a four-man rush. You've seen just about everything. You saw a safety blitz with Cave on. You've seen corner blitzes. But you just see the pressure right into the face. Two Power Rangers, the buddies, the best friends. Christian Wilkins, Demarcus, Dexter Lawrence, excuse me, right into the grill of Francois. And Trey Lamar, who is known at 250 pounds to be that run stuffy middle linebacker, just shows you that speed is spread throughout the roster. We talked about DeAndre Francois. There was no question he was going to get hit today by this defense, and especially that defensive line. And that time it caused a turnover. Lawrence on a keeper, breaks a tackle. And does he get walloped at the 25-yard line? Yeah, that's Hazeldean. That's the safety. And you see the Tigers don't really care to see their 6'6", true freshman get unloaded on like that. But Hampson Hazeldean is the guy that when I asked defensive coordinator yesterday, Harlan Barnett, <laughs> almost that play. If Trevor Lawrence is in the alley and he's exposed, he's running, who is the one Seminole that you want to tee off on him? He didn't hesitate. He said Nazardine is the guy that when he hits you, parts and pieces of helmets and shoulder pads explode. Is that crown of the helmet? It looks like this might be a targeting foul that is initiated from the replay booth. Because they are going to have our referee get on the headset. And is that crown of the helmet forcible contact to the head or neck well, area? He is not a defensive player. He is a runner. So it has got to be the crown of the helmet. Got to be the crown of the helmet. Now the indicators here, Jim Blackwood, that they are looking for the in the replay booth are? The only indicator that they're looking for on a runner is the crown of the helmet to any part of the body. Not just the head neck area, any part of the body. Can I take that a step further and be real geeky here? Yes. Where is the crown as it is defined? Is it that top of the face mask or is it the top of the helmet? It's the it's been defined as just above the face mask all the way around like a bowl. And I 
think he does. It's basically the rule that the NFL yep. has now adopted. Do not initiate contact with that linear body position using the crown of your helmet. Do not leave with the crown. And he had a big call last night. McDonough and Blackledge in their game, the Boston College game. They ultimately did not call targeting. It was us down. They wanted to take another look. But is the crown of his helmet? Yeah, it's the top of his helmet that's hitting the job. And, and to your point, it could have hit the ribs. Had to review. There was targeting on the play. I think a lot of people make a fuss when it's over protecting a quarterback. I kind of do. It, it's funny. I kind of still do. But this is about protecting Nazarene. This is not even just about protecting Trevor Lawrence. You're trying to protect the defensive player as well. Protects against him. It's the most dangerous spot you could put your head and neck is when you spear or use the crown of your helmet. Well, Trevor Lawrence took a headshot and was knocked out of the Syracuse game right at the end of September. And that became an amazing comeback win engineered by Chase Bryce, the redshirt freshman, who, of course, is one of, as you can see, a couple of freshmen on the Clemson roster, the only player in the quarterback depth chart that has a career start is Trevor Lawrence. So Nazrul Dean leaves, Clemson back in the red zone. Lawrence taking a shot to the end zone, flag out. A.J. Litton was there in coverage for the Knowles on T. Higgins. Yeah, I think this is the right call. That left arm's wrapped around Litton, and it turns the receiver. And the minute you do that, you can have your left arm at times around that off arm. Number 12, defense. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. He's grabbing for whatever he can. He ends up grabbing the wrist here, and it's turning. He's got his wrist, but it's the turning action there. It's grabbing that arm and that wrist, and it's turning that wide receiver, and you're going to draw a penalty. Seventh Florida State penalty, and it's first and goal at the two. Play action. Lawrence. That might have been a throwaway as much as anything. It's pretty poised, isn't he, Bob? You can see why Dabo and the rest of the crew just raved about him. He, he was up on campus an awful lot over the last few years. He never wavered from his commitment. He ran basically the same system in high school. So when he came and early enrolled, it was obvious to everyone the minute he stepped on campus who the guy was. I just love his unflinching. It really doesn't matter what's going on in the game. He does not waver. pitch to Tavian Feaster and he has stood up at the one yard line so it will be third down and goal four down territory for me offensively the way my defense played I'm Dabo and I'm influencing these calls and these plays and I wouldn't even mind putting this emphasis on my big guys up front it's a good test it's a good seminal crew on that defensive line two plays Get about four feet Christian Wilkins oh, no. lines up in the eye, and he comes downhill. Oh, no, it's not the fridge. The, the fridge was Dexter Lawrence. He was the fullback that was right in front of Christian Wilkins. You have never seen in college football. 700 pounds nearly in the backfield. Never. And poor Dexter doesn't got anybody to hit. He's running three clean through the lane. And, wow, that is awesome, man. Big guy's dream right there. That is not even a fullback dive. That was ISO. To 42. Wow. Bugle with the extra point. 21 0 Clemson. Must be fun to be a big guy playing for Dabo Sweeney as we're back in 30 seconds. And no more surprising of the Power Rangers to come back to keep this group together this year than Christian Wilkins. He's a grad student. He has already earned his degree in communications. 
Graduated in two and a half years. They thought he was going to the NFL, and he's back to have some fun. You know, those are called posterior chains right there. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it, or you say gluteus. And you just have never seen two backs like that ever, ever, ever in college football. Find it. Go ahead. Out in the uh, Twitter world, send it to me. I mean, anything that's ever had a 330-pound fullback that's got a, I don't know, 320-pound tailback lined up behind them. That's awesome. I called their, their spring game. They actually put him in strong safety, Christian, in that game. Yikes. Yeah. He's like, How about being a receiver coming off, coming over the middle? Yeah, they ran a little bubble screen, away. and he came downhill and had, had a little fun. He's an awesome football player. Awesome. E.T. Potter. What's another one in the end zone? And you can hashtag that, hashtag posterior chain. Well, coming up at the half, we'll check in with Kevin Nagandi, Mac Brown, and Jonathan Vilma. First half highlights, scores from around college football. We'll take a look at our primetime game between Texas and Oklahoma State. All that and more coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report. And I'm sorry to diminish your refrigerator point, because you're right, the fridge did do that in the Super Bowl. And oh, by the way, when he clumps and tiger? And if the fridge is watching that, he's saying, man, man, it was cool, fullback, but fullback and tailback, Dabo? Yep. Chris Patrick pays the price as he picks up two. Not the first time and certainly won't be the last that you diminish one of my points. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Allison? Let me break you two up real quick, guys. It is so fun, obviously, to see Wilkins and Lawrence out there on special teams, on offense. Dabo Sweeney said it's just a whole lot of beef when those guys get going. He said they're such tremendous athletes. Why wouldn't you use them as much as we can? And he said that Christian could probably play tailback, tight end. He is just so dynamic and so special. And he said these guys love it. They love being out there on offense. They love being out there on special teams. He said they'd probably storm my office if I ever took them off special teams, and nobody wants to see that. That's not safe for anybody. Well, think about it, Brock, why this group came back yep. and why they embraced this program. I never heard anything as profound as Cleveland Farrell, number 99, this spring, sitting with those four guys. He said, when do you come back? Well, not only having the time of our lives, as Allison pointed out, the fun that Coach Dabo has. He said, you know, a lot of programs in college football, they use players. At Clemson, they mold players. And I just kind of dropped my pencil. I never heard something quite like that frame it back beautifully, and he's right. Francois hit as he throws down the sideline. Again, it was Christian Wilkins all over Francois. And Francois again has to be helped up as that defensive line really is now starting to tee off. Yeah, you become one-dimensional, you got no chance against these guys. And you see him right in the middle. That's Everly. That's the best lineman. You know, I think Everly's looking for some help with the left guard Minshew. He doesn't get any of it. And whether it's three-man rush, four-man rush. And you could just dominate that math game. Right there, you're four, beat the five or six blockers, you're gonna win. Our own Todd McShay's got three of those guys projected to go in the top 11 of the draft. Now, when was the last time three of the projected top 11 picks in the draft came back to school to play and continue as a unit? That's just unheard of. They all take the money. They all go to the NFL after a 46-yard punt. Tonight on ABC, it is a Big 12 battle. And a good test on the road for number six, Texas, in Stillwater to take on Oklahoma State, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, here on ABC, and live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. And those Cowboys actually get after the quarterbacks. Number one, number one in the country at sacking the quarterback. Even better than these guys do here in the orange. But what they do against the run and the pass, what they can do out of so much scheme. And you know what? They came back to be molded, not just as football players, as young men, too. And they're playing their best ball of the season right now. Totally trending upward. Lawrence on time to the sideline to Travion Thompson. It's just different. It, it, just, it just stays on a line. You're just waiting to see a little bit of trajectory or something, and it doesn't. I mean, it just stays on a frozen rope, and it really doesn't matter what the route is or how far down the field. Line to the sideline again at Samari Rogers. Can I go? 
like kind of in the way back machine and come up with a comparison of my own. I remember covering the Jets in New York when they brought Vinny Testaverde in mm -hmm. and going to the Jet practice bubble and watching Vinny Testaverde throw seven on seven. And it was ridiculous. Thing of beauty. Oh, you want to talk about a ball, every spiral perfect, jumping off the hand of a quarterback. And when this kid throws, it's got that same kind of look. Every pass right on time. He takes another hit here as Burns got in the backfield. But Trevor Lawrence with another first down hookup. And it just jumps off his hand and looks different. Well, there's a few things going on. As you asked for Burns earlier in that time of line's time, he actually gets to Lawrence, just not in time. A few things fundamentally is it all starts at his base. Watch his power. Watch the number of times his posture and just the, the ability to use that body and those legs. He beats the blitz again to T. Higgins. Higgins weaves his way inside the 15-yard line. And the kid down in Tuscaloosa, too, is the same thing. As you see a seminal that is down, but both of those guys, it mechanically all starts there. And then they just use their body, they rip it. And, you know, he's played 54 games of high school football. This is not your freshman who enrolled early. I mean, this is a guy that has been groomed and ready for this moment. He took away the starting job from his high school team, or for his high school team, basically as an eighth grader. They invited him to spring football practice with the high school team as an eighth grader. Wow. And then he became, of course, the starter as a freshman, won a couple of state championships, and won his last 41 high school starts. Just keeps it rolling here at Clemson. And again. Continuing an injury timeout on the field here in Tallahassee. Ontavius Jackson being looked at by the training staff, and he's been down for quite a while. Clemson. Just about in a goal to go situation. They've got first and 10 at the Florida State 11 yard line, up 21 to nothing. And that is a very important piece of the Florida State defense that is just now sitting back up. Bob Oshusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams here at Doe Campbell Stadium. And just hoping that Dontavius Jackson can get up to his feet. It's unfortunate because this Florida State defense came to play here first three four series of this game You know, but when you're playing elite opponents and when you're playing Clemson or you're playing Alabama You know, you've got to do it and you it, it, as a group and as a team And for Dontavious and crew and that that front, you know, you go three and out you force a punt you force a punt you force a punt And when your offense just cannot get anything going and cannot sustain and puts you on the field again and again and again against these guys We're down First three drives of the game for Clemson. They punted all three times with great field position. One of those drives started right at the 50-yard line. So the Florida State defense early did all they could to hold their team in the game, but they have allowed three touchdowns on the last three Clemson possessions, and their offense just has not been able to get anything going. And T. Higgins already has two touchdowns, been isolated in one-on-one -on -one situations. He may go for the hat trick. Feaster inside the five-yard line, driving his way down to about the two, maybe the one and a half. That might be just about good for a first down. Or the starting middle linebacker goes out, and what do you want to do? You want to run right at it as you see another Seminole down. And Stanford Samuels, the free safety slow to get up, and now he's down on one knee. It was a gain of nine for Feaster, so it's second down and one at the two. Touchdowns 
on four consecutive possessions for Clemson. I bet there's a little part of Gary Williams that says, you know, I do all this dirty work all season long. I don't ask for much, but then you put Christian Wilkins in and you let him score a touchdown. How about you let me in on the party and all Willie can do is hands on hips. He knew his margin today was going to be so slim. Had to play a clean game. Here, the first touchdown running of his career. Had to feel pretty good as well. Well, Dabo Swinney was a walk-up. But he takes pride in making sure that every guy that he feels, regardless of where they might be on the depth chart, that warrants some playing time, touching the football, getting a chance to be in the spotlight, he wants them all to have that experience. Last week, they played 56 players in the first quarter against Wake Forest. Or against NC State, pardon me. And there it is. Every year, your roster's different. This year, our roster is full of guys we trust, guys who deserve to play. I believe you play the guys who deserve to play. Well, that means yep. even if I've got guys that are three deep, four deep on the depth chart, they're going to get a chance to get in the game for play. And it's really cool for us to see how great the culture is and how wonderful all of this is. It's so much better when the picture does it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's Christian Wilkins, and he's coming out. He knows he got celebrated touchdown last time, but the guy that has worked his butt off, who has earned this opportunity, to get his chance to score as well. That, that's as cool a picture as we've seen this season. That's college football. BT Potter hooks one into the end zone again. And Treshawn Harrison will take a knee. And I believe it was Mr. Wilkins, Christian Wilkins, that uh, when Trevor Lawrence got announced after Kelly Bryant left, the senior, and Kelly Bryant leaves the program and, and he wanted to do his thing. It was Christian Wilkins that took Trevor Lawrence to breakfast that way. Said, hey, I just want you to understand we are all here for you, that this family, that this culture, this thing that we've created, you know, to take the time out. He's already graduated. He's done his thing academically. He probably got independent studies, maybe a little bit more free time. But he wanted to make sure he pulled that freshman aside to let him know that they would have his back and do all they can from that defensive perspective. He wasn't going to have to do it alone. They were all going to do this thing together. Francois hoisting one down the sideline. It's incomplete. Well, you mentioned the free time that Christian Wilkins has. Well, he uses it from time to time to earn 80 bucks. Here he is, substitute kindergarten teacher. How about that guy comes walking into the kindergarten room? And you can see they're even wearing their Clemson gear. <laughs> but he has substituted in all different grade levels. At one point, he went out of his way to be asked to ask to be placed in the special ed classroom as well. It's just a different kind of guy. Flags down, false start. False start. Number 74, offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I think it was also telling that Willie Taggart, when he went to Oregon, where'd he go before he took that job from South Florida? Where'd he go and study in the spring? He went up to Clemson. He wanted to see what Dabo was doing. He built it South Florida, but you know, in the Power Five, everything else. He wanted to see. He really admired from afar what was going on there. A couple days spent, it became very clear how much they care about their student athletes and grow those guys up. And it's what he wants to do here. That, that he really feels like in time he wants to create that same environment that his players don't want to leave school, that they want to come back, right? That they've got it so good in both the near term and in their future that they want to be a part of the program. seconds to go in the half and Clemson will spend a time out here to try and save some time for their offense see if they can get the ball back to Trevor Lawrence again and I'm not sure how many of the boxes you think Clemson checks but just the physical box from the times you've seen them this year do you think that they are the most physical team in college football outside of Alabama just if you put those two teams if that ends up being the national championship game 
we get. Are they legitimately on Alabama's level physically again? Yeah, I think they're pretty darn close. Yeah, I think on their offensive line, probably not. I, I would probably give the edge there to Alabama. But I know with no game this weekend, there's probably a few Crimson Tide fans that are watching this game, that are watching it really closely, in fact, and maybe even some of the coaches, because these two are, are on a collision course for one another. And I think both of them have made a lot of choices, including Trevor Lawrence being the starting quarterback, to really gear up and play towards that matchup. And off to Cam Akers. And it looks like Clemson will call their final timeout of the first half with 51 seconds to go. And they will get the football back. And I think Dabo Sweeney knew way back when, when that decision was made, and to tell Kelly Bryant, who won a lot of games, who took him to the playoff, and who was a tremendous leader and a great guy on that team. But Dabo Sweeney knew if he's going to beat what Nick has down the road, I've got to have this Trevor Lawrence guy. You know, I, I've got to have that guy that can just, <laughs> both with his physical skill set, much like Nick Saban did at halftime of a national title game last year, that said, if I'm going to beat this Georgia team last year, I'm going to need a, a Tua to come in here and just change the environment with his skill set. That's exactly as they geared up for this thing through the spring, through training camp, through the first four weeks, that it was going to be this guy's job. And in talking to Tom Blackledge last week, who called the NC State game, so these guys are trending upward at just the right moment, just when you want them playing their best ball. And you're seeing it again today. The turnable up against the sideline for Amari Rogers. He's going to try to use speed, turn the corner and get a block. Breaks a tackle. Amari Rogers finally brought down inside the Florida State 35-yard line. And if you're not just doing it with your defense and you're not just doing it with your offense, well, you've also dominated the special teams phase of this game today. That's the second big return for Amari. T. Martin's boy that is just understands his role, too. But the ball can only go so many different places. So if I get an opportunity to be a punt returner, then I'm going to change the game in that capacity, too. As you said, T. Martin, his dad, the offensive coordinator at USC, but of course won a national championship back in 1998 at Tennessee. Just about went to play for dad at USC, but then said, you know what, Clemson called. And it is amazing the culture that Dabo Sweeney has now created at Clemson. How many top recruits from other college football hotbeds want to go play? That ball pops up in the air on a deflection and falls incomplete. Flag down in the offensive backfield as Brian Burns finally got home, and we got a couple of Knowles down as well. Burns is one of them, along with the freshman Robert Number Cooper. 75, offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. I think you said Brian Burns' name, and the moment you said it, he's made some impactful plays, and that time, 99, just simply beat Mitch Hyatt, and the senior left tackle said, you're not going to get to my quarterback. I'm going to try to hold on as much as I can. He fell right on top of his teammate Robert Cooper and Cooper is still down and even Burns walking off with a limp and This is one of those games right now if you're Willie Taggart and you're Florida State You're saying uh oh because of what is looming ahead on this schedule, too and How many guys have we seen leave this game middle linebacker Jackson leaves this game Samuels the safety leaves this game Cooper your nose tackle your freshman leaving this game Burns hobbled and though the, what's staring at you is at NC State, at Notre Dame, BC, and Florida. Wow. And they have the hardest remaining schedule, at least based on our metric, our FBI, for the rest of the season. And it has been a long time since FSU didn't finish a season with a winning record and go to a bowl game. 41 years in a row that Florida State has been a winning team in 36 consecutive years with a bowl appearance. And this is the kind of game that can be so damaging. I think both physically and, you know, Allison reported right at the beginning of the game, talking to Willie Tagger, that they've gotten better, that they felt over the last few weeks that they had been trending upward. That Miami game, they gave away in the second half of 27-7. That turnover chain came out and it turned it around. And Wake Forest, they ran away from a week ago, that it was going the right way. And I think you, today it's very clear where their program is right now versus a championship level, one of the best going in all of college football and what Dabo has grown over the last decade up there at Clemson.
Tigers are out of timeout. Still have 29 seconds. First and 20. Hoisting one is Lawrence. Adjusting to it is Higgins. And it's broken up. That was Asante Samuel again. He's been matched up a few different times. Made some nice plays in some one-on-one -on -one situations. And that ball just hanging in the air just a little bit too long allowed Asante to come around that big body of Higgins. Does such a nice job. His two previous touchdowns today, he uses that frame. Too many times you get receivers, okay, that's great. They're six foot three, six four against you know undersized corners, but when they don't play with their length, it gets minimized. But the play there by Samuel to knock it away. Lawrence. That's complete to DeAndre Overton. And that at least gets Clemson in field goal range. They pick up 15, and they stop the clock with 17 seconds to go in the half. That window is so small. I, I can tell by your call right there. That was thrown in between three guys in zone coverage. It must be fun. It must be really fun to paint the corners at 99 miles an hour like Walker Bueller was doing last night, right? I mean, it's just, the game is just different. The geometry is just different when you can spin it at the velocity he does. Ball start. That's the right tackle, Tremaine Ekram again. Full start, number 73, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Not a bad game management situation here. You have four touchdowns, but part of the reason you call timeouts, so you want to keep stepping on the accelerator, but for a young quarterback, to manage the clock and manage these 17 seconds without a timeout in your team as well. Four-man rush. And that's to the sideline with 12 seconds to go in the half. Now it'll be fourth down. Marvin Wilson got back and put a hit on Trevor Lawrence. I'm not sure if they feel like they're at field goal range here. It looks like the offense is staying on the field for fourth down and 11. Certainly plenty of time with the clock stopping in college football after a first down to run up and spike it. Yep. If you are able to pick up a first down here. the shot up the seam and it's dropped it was there the tight end Brayton Galloway couldn't hold on and so Clemson turns it over on downs with eight seconds to go in the half I think that ball just surprised the freshman who was on the back shoulder again zone coverage and this thing comes out so hot and fast and you could see it right on the back shoulder I think Trevor if he has that over especially with a freshman tight end who is a tremendous hooper just played a couple years of football I think that young freshman will go, you know what, I gotta get my head around that much faster, but be, you know, on the other side of that linebacker. And Trevor would want to put that one on the front shoulder. Francois takes a knee and that will take us to halftime. All Clemson in the first half. 28 to nothing, and they'll start the third quarter with the football. Welcome back to college football, presented by Jared. You're watching the ACC on ABC. Just about set for the start of the third quarter here at Doe Campbell. All Clemson in the first half as we take a look at our first half stats. Brought to you by Charles Schwab. The scoreboard tells the story and then all of the statistical numbers. Throw in eight penalties for Florida State in the first half as well, Brock. And yeah. not easy to, uh, not hard to see why it's 28-0. Yeah, and that's 38 plays for Florida State. 38 plays. I mean, the defense for the Seminoles came out and they had a number of stops early. And ultimately, the offense just getting in their own way. Just drops and false starts. And snaps over the head. Interception. Just a collection of errors that you just cannot have against an opponent. The quality of the Clemson Tigers. That's Brock Ewart. I'm Bob Schusen. Allison Williams with us here in Tallahassee as well. Returnable kick to start off the second half for Darian Kendrick. All the way out near the 10-yard line. Tries to turn the corner. It's another good kick return for Clemson as he reverses field again. Gets a couple of blocks. 
out to the 40-yard line or so before he's run out. At Clemson's own 39. Time for our Pacific Life game summary. And those miscues, beginning with the Asante Samuel roughing the kicker yeah. that set up the first touchdown of the game, Brock, for Clemson, it piled on from there. Yeah, and you could see it. that was special teams coach there. And you just giving a Clemson group the opportunity to get in the rhythm. And Trevor Lawrence and Clemson threw it a whole lot more than they ran it. I think that may change here in the second half as they will look to grind this clock. They will look to grind the line of scrimmage. Trevor Lawrence, they've said it all along from the day he enrolled. He never looked and felt like a freshman. He certainly did in the first 30 minutes either. Travis Etienne, quieter in the first half than he normally is, averaging close to 115 yards per game. Number eight in America coming into today. As he starts the second half off with a three-yard game. Yeah, just seven carries in that first half. And in fact, a little bit of an earful, I think, from Dabo as well. Or encouragement of make sure you run hard. And the last couple possessions, including ripping off a 15-yard run, a big part of that. Slants there for Amari Rogers. He gets free. A foot race for the pylon, and they're not catching Amari Rogers. 58-yard touchdown. Goodness. I may have to retract, Bob. Something I said to you a couple times this afternoon during the break. I said, you know what they really need? They need that guy that runs 4-4. That when he catches it, he's just gone. You got a lot of big receivers. And I think uh, Mr. Rogers said, hey, that's that's me. I did it on two punts. And now I catch that little slant route. You break one tackle, and instead of being caught, well, you're running away from the four and five stars on the seminal defense. That's impressive. D.T. Potter. Downs in the last four minutes and 22 seconds of game time. And they have blown this one open. 35 to nothing here at Florida State. A Florida State team, Brock, that we saw a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, take on Miami and at one point up 27 to 7 on the road before losing a heartbreaker 28 27 down to the Canes but this is a different level opponent and I think Willie Taggart might know it. Allison, you had a chance to talk to the Florida State head coach? Yeah, Bob, we are playing losing football. That's what he told his team at the half. He echoed a lot of what you and Brock talked about. He said, we're not doing the things it takes to win a football game, and you have to be near perfect to beat a team like Clemson, and we haven't been between the turnovers, the drops, and the bad snaps. He said, every time we started to move the ball offensively, we got in our own way. It's tough enough to beat Clemson. they got to stop beating themselves. Yeah, and when you can't run the ball. And your negative four net rushing yards with that snap over the head. You got no chance. You got no chance against a quality defense and one that is so strong at every level. DeAndre is not going to do it himself. He missed a couple throws. He had a couple critical drops. Just got to play clean ball. Cam Akers. About four yards on first down. When we met with Willie Taggart last night. And not to reveal his game plan, but he did tell us part of his game plan was to take shots. Well, shots are built off play action. Yeah. How does play action work if you can't run the football? Akers looking for a cutback lane. This time he lost a couple of yards. So there is the run game. Four yards forward, two yards back, and it's third down and eight. Well, I think you know the answer to your question right there. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And then ultimately, to take those shots down the field, you have to protect, too. And, you know, it's just in, in all phases. You know, at, at halftime here, I was kind of walking the hallways, talking to fans, and they said, is Clemson this good, or is Florida State just struggling this bad? And I think it's a whole lot more of the former, that these guys just take your game apart. And when you're an elite team that is just rich with seniors and experience, they have the opportunity to do what they're doing this afternoon. Looked like Cleveland Furrow jumped. I don't know if he induced a false start or if he was drawn off. Full start. Number 74. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Yeah, that's a senior, Derek Kelly, that he knows in third and eight. Right? I've got Cleveland Farrell. It's going to be a first-round pick. I better get off the ball. Like I, it just all, unfortunately, builds upon itself. Well, Florida State's got company. This is the ninth time in the last 13 games dating to last year that this defense has not allowed a first-half touchdown. So they're used to having a pretty sizable lead at halftime and smothering the opponent. Swing pass to Akers. He's thrown down by Kayvon Wallace as he goes out of bounds. So players have to be separated. Yeah, I mean, this is, Bob, we have not had the chance to see the Crimson Tide this year, but this is what the, every one of their games has looked like. 
I mean, this is, I've seen crossover tape of, of Dabo's, I think, matchup that, that he knows can be coming if they play their kind of game the rest of this season. If they play anywhere near their ceiling, they're going to be in that playoff. But this is exactly what Alabama has done weekend after weekend after weekend. And now what Clemson's done the last two, three weeks is their young freshman quarterback feeling really good about his game, too. Amari Rodgers lets it bounce. Sideways hop. Pretty good hop for Clemson. Is it for the super freshman Trevor Lawrence. And the Clemson Tigers with a 35 to nothing lead. And the CTA. Line of scrimmage and driven back. He may have gotten forward progress for no gain. A.J. Westbrook came up and went face mask to face mask with ETF. Yeah, now it becomes a whole lot of pride defensively. I mean, what are you going to do? You know your offense is going to be up against it all game. It's about your effort, your energy, and your pride on the defensive side of the ball. tried to find the underneath shallow crossing route and it got deflected at the line. You know, one of the things that Dabo was saying to us yesterday as well about Trevor Lawrence was some real steps over the last couple games. In fact, eight different times in that Wolfpack game that he was owning the line of scrimmage, just like that, where he was changing the protection, where it wasn't about the center and the seniors up front communicating it, but he was taking ownership of that line of scrimmage. Now he's out of the pocket. Flips one to the sideline and throws it away. I think it's going to be one of the big keys for him over the next three, four weeks as well is to protect himself. We saw him take another massive shot. Nasruddin, the safety, was ultimately ejected uh, for in this game for targeting using the crown of the helmet, but that went right to his chin. Knocked out of this game earlier this year. I think that's one of the hardest things for young guys to learn. Well, I remember John Gruden saying as much to any of even those guys getting into the league is your ability to protect yourself. You do it through protection calls and changing that at the line. You also do it just like that. Not being a hero, running into people, throw the ball away. Little rugby style kick for Spires, allowing his coverage unit to get downfield and fumbling the ball is DJ Matthews. And this will be a recovery at the 10-yard line for Clemson. You know, we saw this. We saw this earlier, unfortunately with DJ that was trying to be aggressive on a ball that was bouncing and he went up just in a pile and he got it that time and he just takes his eyes off of it. And he's seeing what's coming and he feels like I gotta make a play, I gotta make something happen. Just like his punt return touchdown against Miami. And just when it rains it pours, man. Wide receiver DJ Chase, or TJ Chase, pardon me, comes up with the fumble recovery and it's first and goal for Clemson. They'll run it with ETN. He gets to the six yard line. I would honestly use situations like this. I think I would if I'm a head coach or coordinator. But this is not just for these snaps right now. This is projecting over the course of this season. And we're going to get into situations where maybe somebody is down and I've just got to run the football. And I've got to run it right at Willie's crew here. And as you can see, the, the turnover been just a major issue for them this season. Back shoulder throw into the end zone, broken up. Well done by Kyle Myers. Does that make sense? I know I can throw a back shoulder fade. I'm up five touchdowns and how and what we get number six. I just wonder if there's ever a time where you're like, I'm going to emphasize here from the eight going in that I just, even though they got numbers, I want to just run the ball because it could pay dividends later in the year. And obviously Davos thinking, you know what? I want another touchdown, so maybe the second and third guys can get into this game too. No one in the deep middle of the field in the end zone for Florida State. And instead, they'll take a shot to the side of the end zone, and that's incomplete for Travion Thompson. 
You wonder with that defensive alignment, is that a check with me for Trevor Lawrence? Or did he just miss receivers over the middle where there was a lot of empty space? Yeah, I think the routes were called, and that was a check to make sure you're secure at the line. And that time, they brought even one more that you could block. Got a slant route to the bottom of the field. Uh, you decided to use the full area of the field. And got a play by Florida State. And a little bit of pride defensively showing up and stopping it. The true freshman, B.T. Potter, gets a chance from 24 yards out. And he tacks on three more. And this one is returnable. As Treshawn Harrison, with a flag down, gets out across the 20-yard line. Check in with Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. And now for the All-State Mayhem moment. Northwestern controls its own destiny in the Big Ten West and controlling things versus Wisconsin so far. Clayton Thorson to Kyrick McGowan. Back to the end zone. Wildcats up 24 to 10 on the 20th ring Badgers. Bob Brock, Allison, back to you. So if Northwestern can hold on to that lead, they would move to five and three. And they're having another solid season under Coach Fitzgerald. And Akers to the right of DeAndre Francois. After the penalty, the Knolls start at their own six-yard line. Francois from the goal line, and that one is deflected up and out of bounds. We had a sense that Mr. Francois was going to take some shots. This is a group up front that has been much maligned. They've struggled to protect, and then you're going up against the best defensive line in college football, and maybe the best personnel group. If it's just by position, if you took any positional group in all of college football, you'd be hard-pressed to find one as deep and talented as Clemson, and DeAndre knows it. From the end zone, down the sideline. Intended for Terry. Flag down. Francois pass intended for Terry. Trayvon Mullen was trying to stay with Tamari and Terry. Pass interference, number one, defense, automatic, first down. So Trayvon Mullen, the cousin of Lamar Jackson, commits the penalty. And then Brent Venable is there on that sideline. He doesn't like any part of this. An awful lot of hand contact between the two of them. Terry's a big receiver, doesn't mind some of that contact. There's a little pushing, but ultimately a little too much shoving, and Brent Venable's not a fan of that call. He's got a lot of them. He's got a lot of signals. Because they got a lot of defense here for the Tigers. Akers. Looks like he lost a yard. And like I said in the first half, I think there is a very good chance that if you are his get back coach, you actually have to do like wait that? <laughs> Yes, like I I mean you can see. That get back coach, he spends some time on the bench press. You think he ever gets yelled at? I think he does. <laughs> you know, we were monitoring Gary Patterson's steps. That's who he is. And, and there's a lot of signals and late signals as he's evaluating, much like Gary Patterson does at TCU, trying to put his guys in the best position. And there is a lot of energy and a lot of calories burned on that sidelines. Francois, bullets one to the sideline. Terry is there. That was one of the first times we've seen DeAndre Francois really able to step into a throw. And that one was a rope, 16 yards. And Venables wants the push out there. We've seen a couple of these, you're right, not, not very many, but this was going to be some of the theme. Because you're going to have to get these chunk plays today, and just not enough of them. Francois over the head of Trey McKitty up the seam. Looking forward to Tuesday night at 7 on ESPN. College football playoff top 25. The first rankings release presented by Allstate. And right now, 1-2 seem to be about as logical as you could call, right? Alabama and Clemson. That's Francois with flags down. Yeah. 
False start. Number 70. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second out. And do you think as tight as it can be fighting for those playoff spots but Alabama and Clemson for the teams you've seen this year have separated themselves and there is a significant drop off once you get past number two yeah I mean Notre Dame it's it's awfully tough not to look at, at what they have done over the course of this season as well but yeah I think just physically in every phase of the game and as veteran as those crews are and then just a quarterback you're just different with Tua and Trevor flexing the arm strength for Terry down the sideline it's a good-looking throw from Francois, but it's incomplete, out of bounds. Again, Trayvon Mullen trying to stay with the redshirt freshman Tamari and Terry. Yeah, and I'm really surprised it took till eight and a half minutes in the third to really see that. Because what DeAndre does best, when he plants his feet, he can throw it. And he had to throw against Wake Forest 64 yards in the air with two defenders in his face on the money. And uh, just like every team has got some areas, I think over the course of the season, they're going to continue to be challenged. Alabama's secondary has. And I think this Clemson secondary is just about it. As far as depth standpoint, you know, maybe an area of not necessarily concern, but growth. Francois with the pocket collapsing. He goes down. It's Albert Huggins who brings him down. Big Dex likes that as well. And here's, here is part of the challenge, and you see with Alabama, too. I guess we can continue the parallel conversation. Is, yeah, the backups come in, but the backups play anyway. I mean, you have seen Huggins already in this game. So even if you put the twos or the threes in, in this system, you know, they're not just coming into a game cold. They played all, you know, all game, all season. And that guy starts for every other ACC team at D-Tackle. Of course, Alabama plays LSU next week. That has the feel of a playoff game. Yeah. And I think both of those two teams will probably be represented in the top four. Clemson ball, and we come back continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. And boy, there is a team in this game looking like they're on a championship drive. And they are wearing the orange and white. Play action for Lawrence. Sees one down the sideline for Rodgers. Oh, wow. Amari Rodgers does it again. 68 yards from Trevor Lawrence. Kind of just, maybe it's the wish of everybody that listens to us anyway. You kind of just run out of stuff to say. You get all told all the time to shut up, so I'll just stop talking. Because I don't, there's really nothing more to say. Is that the future first pick in the draft? I mean, can you make that kind of projection with that kind of talent as a true freshman that he's just that good? It'd be fascinating if he came out in this draft. It's probably even a better question. Would he be the number one pick in the NFL draft based on what you've seen so far as a true freshman if he were eligible, knowing he's not eligible for two more years after this one? Yeah. He'd be within the conversation. Now, there's some freak show pass rushers, but if, the, I mean, the NBA does it, they project guys. And, and if the NFL did it, I mean, just look at look at the quick release over the course of this game. This guy's six foot six. And many times when you're six six, you're longer release. It takes, you know, a while for, think of Randall Cunningham at six five. How long it takes for the ball to get out. Look at this kid. Look how quick the ball is out of his hand on the chest of his receivers. I mean, it's less than a second. And then you just throw in the pure velocity, which I hit on earlier. You know, we timed him at 61 miles an hour. So I talked to Hunter Renfro about what it's like catching balls from Trevor Lawrence, because he's played with some pretty good quarterbacks here, right? Going back to Deshaun Watson, Kelly Bryant, and now Lawrence. And Brock, to your point, the first thing he said is velocity. He said it comes at you so quick, but he'll make a 40-yard pass feel like a 20-yard pass. But he said it's such a catchable ball. Yep. And I thought it was interesting. He goes, we have a saying, and that's timing is better than speed. And now remember, Renfro's been in the quarterback room since Bryant left. He's like their emergency four-string quarterback, so he's been watching. Watching Trevor Lawrence in the film room and how he processes things. He said as quick as he releases that ball, as fast as it comes at you, he's an even quicker thinker. He processes so fast. You know, it's interesting. Great points, Allison. And J.P. Lossman, actually, his former first-round pick with a rocket arm, is working as an analyst there. And you can see him talking to Trevor. And, yeah, Allison, it's just, it's just, it is just different. 
I mean, so is Tua. I mean, those two, you could throw him into that conversation too, Bob. And you, know, you put the throws of Tua on there. You put their releases side by side, right and left, as far as the quickness of it, as far as I talked about earlier, that posture, that, that leg strength and the power where it all comes from, and then the whip. I mean, one's six foot six, one's six foot two, but and one's right and one's a southpaw, but man, they're doing the exact same things and dominating as such young guys, college football. Quez Patrick on first down. We're talking with Dabo Sweeney about his freshman quarterback. I asked him, is there any part of Trevor Lawrence that was thrown a bit? Because you can get pretty tight in the quarterback room with your fellow quarterbacks. Was there any part about him that was thrown a bit with all of these guys transferring just because they saw the writing on the wall? I'm not playing at any point in front of this guy, even as a true freshman, of course, Kelly Bryant, after four games to start off this season, realizing he still had the red shirt as Francois with a strike to Terry to midfield. He decided to transfer. And Dabo said no. He's just been doing this his whole life. When he was an eighth grader, he started practicing with his high school team as a ninth grader, walked right in, took the job, and won two state championships. So there's nothing new for him to take the job as a freshman away from an upperclassman. Now Francois, another deep shot, looking for Terry. Broke it up. Mario Goodrich, another true freshman getting a chance to play, and he gets a pass defense. And he does a pretty good job at the very end of this route, even though he's beat, he doesn't necessarily go into Terry. He slowed down, he raised his arm up, there was a little bit of contact, but how many times do you see even veteran corners freak out right here, panic? See, the arm goes up right there, but he's not necessarily impeding, he's not into the body, drawing the immediate play. That's pretty well done for the true freshman. And add on a little bit to that point about Let Lawrence and what Dabo said too, he didn't ask about anybody else. Right. I think so often these just four-star, five-star, well, if you recruit me or I sign, you're not gonna recruit anybody else or, or who's gonna be the year, like he didn't worry about anybody else. Miscommunication by Nyquan Murray and Murray is frustrated as Francois throws it behind him. Pretty good lesson, right? Stay in your lane. If you go to Clemson, you're gonna have a four-star and five-star, and you're all gonna compete, and the best player is gonna play. Well, Dabo said there's high maintenance, low maintenance, and this is no maintenance. Like you said, that your dream. Yeah, he looked at what the <laughs> what the quarterback landscape was and where he might factor in as a freshman. He could care less. He just said, I want to come to Clemson. And you know who else does? Receivers. The linemen and tight ends, everybody else, because you want to play with this kid for the next few years, too. Third down near midfield. Hauling it in is Gabe Neighbors. The tight end climbs the ladder, and another strike thrown by Francois, and he took a strike as he delivered a 26-yard completion. Not that he would know. I mean, he throws it, and Huggins once again just obliterating Cole Minshew, the left guard, and... Like just about everything else. That's what is that the cobra pose in yoga right there? The feet are above your head as you're just getting hit to the ground I time and no time. No idea what you're talking head. about. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, he's asking me about a yoga pose. I mean, <laughs> could I could that be more of a miscast question? High throw. This time Murray had it, lost it. They're going to rule that a catch and down at the five-yard line. Wow. Mooney Murray was able to hold on. And let's take another look and see. Football move. Put it away. Knee down. Quickly. Before replay can buzz down, Florida State tried to line up. And Dabo Sweeney is screaming from the sideline that that should have been an incompletion. And he may have called a timeout. Clemson has called timeout to challenge the ruling on the field of a completed pass. So Dabo Sweeney wants replay to take a look at it before Florida State could go tempo. Control of the football, mm -hmm. either two feet or a body part. Down, 
And once the elbow is down, he is certainly down and the play is over. Again, Jim Blackwood is our referee expert, longtime on-field and supervisor of officials in the Mountain West and the WAC. And Jim? He's an upright receiver. And he's going to the ground. As soon as he hits the ground, he's dead. Then the ball comes loose when the defender comes and hits him. Now, if they ruled that he was uh, going to the ground, then they might reverse this. But I see this as an upright receiver because nobody was in contact with him. He lost his footing because of the grass. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Clemson is charged with a timeout and may not challenge for the remainder of the game. This game next to me is pretty good. Yeah, Dabo Swinney's shaking his head, but we've got the authority with us here in the booth. 45 to nothing, Clemson on top. But that catch by Murray puts Florida State in position to at least get some points on the board. First and goal at the five. To Quez Patrick to the right of Francois in the shotgun. There goes Murray in motion. Try and run it with Patrick with a flag down, and he is caught well behind the line and tackled for about a three yard loss. Chad Smith, third string Mike Linebacker, made a stop. More than four players in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Odd that Clemson would take the penalty. And now the word comes in correctly, so I'm sure from Dabo Sweeney. They want to decline the penalty after a tackle for a couple-of-yard loss. Kind of clean your game up, Willie. You know that's going to be the conversation with every one of his guys as well. The receiver's got to get up on the line of scrimmage. It's the second, third time you've had a legal formation as well today. Francois, up the middle for a yard. Tough to see a QB take this kind of punishment. I, I have felt that way for years watching DeAndre because when you see him, when he plants his feet, like on this drive, he throws some of the prettiest balls you're going to see. But the amount of beating he has taken over the course of his four years here in Tallahassee, it really is as much as anybody I've seen in 11 years of doing this. High snap. Didn't throw the timing of the playoff as Patrick's still able with some help to move the pile. And now there's a flag thrown near the front right pylon of the end zone. As Patrick got down to about the three yard line. That was some woofing with Murray and Mark Fields. That's going to be more than woofing. That was some punching. foul throwing a punch number eight offense he is disqualified from the game the down counts fourth down after administration of the 15-yard penalty wow so Nyquan Murray kicked out of the game and we take another look this is after the play is over I'm not sure if Mark Fields should have also been penalized for the counter punch but certainly Murray threw the first punch comes Ricky Aguayo from 35 yards out to try and get Florida State on the board and make sure that this does not go down as a home shutout loss. The Noles are on the board. Time 
take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. And not just this week. Huh. Let's go back and look preseason at who has stayed put and how many new faces or new teams we've got in the top ten and who's gone. Wow. Quite a few. Quite a few are out now. The two at the very top have kind of main, maintained their yeah, consistency. Yeah, want to get Ohio State out of there, too. Yeah, I guess I'm fine, too. So how many are, how many are out there? Wisconsin's yeah, out. Too. Yep. So they've still got four out of the original top ten still in the top ten. And those top two goes to the point we were making earlier about the consistency of Alabama and Clemson. How they have avoided disaster, and, and just, maybe they've separated themselves. And it's just the depth that you build in a program when you have been there as long as Dabo and Nick have. You get turnover, you get new coaches, you get new scheme, you get all these new players. Oh, and by the way, I got to develop culture, and then I got to have selfless guys like Christian Wilkins and keep recruiting. Yeah, these two at the very top of the food chain right now are just what everybody's shooting for. So Chase Bryce will take over for Trevor Lawrence. Bryce, of course, engineered what might have been the most trying moment of this season so far for Clemson when they lost Trevor Lawrence against Syracuse. They had to come from behind and win at home. 27-23, and he led a game-winning 13-play 94-yard touchdown drive to help them overcome a 10-point deficit. So the redshirt freshman Chase Bryce now at quarterback. And they start on the ground with Adam Choice. You know, Bob, you may not know yoga poses, but you know something <laughs> about reading. And you were reading through the notes. This was your point. I thought it was an excellent one. When you talk about what Dabo has built and where he has gone to get his players. Well, Trevor Lawrence, arguably the best player in Georgia. A.J. Henry, great player from North Carolina. But look at some of the other states where some of the best talent has come from. Justin Ross didn't go to Alabama, came to Clemson. Jackson Carmen, a left tackle, didn't go to Ohio State, came to Clemson. And they continue to pile up the yards. Overton, carrying tacklers all the way down to the 11 yard line. 61 more yards for the Tigers. It's just that RPO, that run pass option. You saw Trevor hit earlier Higgins on this, or actually that one was the true freshman Ross. Same play. That inside run, the slant right behind it, and yet another huge chunk explosive play for the Tigers. Jay Dixon, another true freshman, getting a chance to play. And he picks up about three and a half. <laughs> DJ Dixon was right on the bubble of maybe coming to Clemson. He originally committed to Tennessee. That was when the Tigers had Zamir White, who's the number one running back on their radar, thought they might get him. Zamir White chose Georgia. Lynn J. Dixon gets a call, goes to Clemson. But he knows on tape tomorrow, like, oh, no. Not only was that not great today, I can't wait till we watch tape tomorrow. It's, I'm stumbling and bumbling and fumbling all my way. Now you got to make a payoff here on third down. That's all right, Chase. I've been there. <laughs> Bryce to the end zone for the touchdown. TJ Chase. So the backup gets a chance to throw his second touchdown pass of the season. And Clemson continues to roll over Florida State. And we understand Christian does this with every single touchdown, but it never gets old to see the big D tackle. And this is what Chase is better at anyway. He'll run the option. He'll be a willing guy to do it. But uh, he was a big-time recruit because of his ability to throw it and spin it as well. And this is getting really ugly for Willie.
Well, there is a young man that plays with a joy for the game. Christian Wilkins, every time that someone has made it to the end zone or made a big play for Clemson, who's the first player off the bench to get in the end zone and take part in the celebration? Yeah, give me this guy on my team. I mean, th this is a guy that you, we can talk about all the measurables you want. And, man, there's so many players on this field that have the height and the speed and the weight. Now, not many of 200 or 300 plus pounds that can run that. Touchdown in. But give me the guy that has a joy to play football. I don't know where that fits on these scouts. I was chatting with a couple of the scouts on the field before the game about these different guys. And I know for some coaches, and especially the one that I'm around, the Pacific Northwest and Pete Carroll, it's one of the first things that he wants to see. Do you love playing this game? And we had NC State last season, and we talked about Bradley Chubb. And I talked to some scouts and some guys that it's their job to analyze the draft. And he seems to me to be a great recent example of that, that just played with such a joy for the game. Yep. And that and that motor that just never stops rolling because he's so happy playing football moved him way up the trail. And if there's a position where a motor gets more evaluated, it's D-line. It's D-line, especially big physical kids and talented that can take plays off and, and relax a bit and just get go through the motions. And we're 42. Sean Harrison somehow stays on his feet ran a long way to get to the 16 yard line and went through a lot of traffic to do it as well well in the not too distant future they'll be talking about Christian Wilkins on NFL countdown you can kick off your week eight with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN before Aaron Rodgers and Jared Goff square off on Sunday Two Cal quarterbacks discuss what they admire about each other's games. Also behind the scenes look at the Minneapolis miracle as the Saints return to Minnesota for a playoff rematch against the Vikings. All that and more to get your Sunday NFL countdown started at 10 a.m. Eastern. What they say in the NFL, the more you can do, the longer you can stick around. Christian is a heck of a D-tackle, running back, cheerleader, and even water boy over there. Cam Akers loses two and a half. Miles Pinkney comes through, and it has to be sobering for Florida State offensively when you are two and three deep on Clemson's depth chart, and they are still dominating the line of scrimmage. And when you're minus six rushing yards, that's tough. It's humiliating. Complete intended for the freshman Keyshawn Helton. Late flag thrown on the far side of the field. It will go against Florida State. He knows we're downfield. Number six, offense. Penalties decline. Third down. So it's third down and 12. The good news, if you're really Tiger, is you have been through these long afternoons before when you have first taken over jobs and taken over programs. As Francois is going to go down again. Inside the 10 yard line, this one, a sack for Jordan Williams. That is very true. Especially true, Western Kentucky and at South Florida. Bob, but when you come here to Florida State, you should not inherit a team and be losing 52 to 3. That is true. And just being embarrassed up front. I mean, this, isn't Oregon, even, this isn't even competitive at the line of scrimmage offensively. Throw in Oregon as well, though. The three programs he took over were a combined 7 of 7 and 29 in the season before he arrived. So I mean, the reason you hire Willie Taggart is to rebuild your program. Yes. Line drive kick. And that one's gonna hang up and take a Clemson roll back towards the Florida State 25 yard line. An 18 yard punt.
been that kind of day. If you're at Bill Campbell, bring a book. Good to hand. I want to say. We need something to kill time with with 29 seconds to go in the third quarter. December 1st, 1973, the worst ever Florida State loss at home or on the road was 49 to nothing at Florida. They are on the verge of exactly that. As it looks like we are going to go wildcat now with Darian Kendrick running the option, taking the direct snap. And that one of the few times today that the Clemson offense self-destructed. You ever brought a book to a game like that? Is that, just a back, is that just a backup plan? <laughs> if the game isn't going well, <laughs> I better have my book to read. <laughs> Start of the fourth quarter. And Chase Bryce is going to split out wide once again. The, red, the true freshman, Darion Kendrick, set to take the Wildcat snap. Chance to carry the football for Dabo Sweeney. And he's inside the 30-yard line and picks up a couple. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And we knew this game would go, Brock, as the quarterbacks went and also as the time allowed to DeAndre Francois would go. And all those numbers tell you all you need to know about how good Trevor Lawrence has been but also Francois under assault all afternoon. Oh, the beating he's taken, 10 hits, 9 hurries, the 3 sacks, just about seemingly on every single play. And he looked at a very different situation than Trevor did on the other side. Here's the blitz, Bryce, long throw, and it is on time to Darian Kendrick, and he reaches it out and picks up the first down. Now Chase Bryce already showed in that Syracuse game that if called upon again, in a very important spot, that has to be really comforting, I would think, to have in the back of your mind, if you're a head coach, that the backup quarterback has already been through. Well, you have to. In these systems where there's QB run, in these systems where, you know, you're in open edges at your tackles, especially against the lead team, your QB's going to get hit. And you better have more than one. Cut back for Choice. And Adam Choice into the end zone with another Clemson touchdown. even with their backups, able to crease the defense and put points on the board, up to 59-3. to three. And if this was a measure... A handful of years ago was winning the national championship with Jameis Winston, at quarterback, and put it on Clemson at Death Valley. Talk about coming full circle. A statement performance today by Clemson. Anthony Grant with a flag down. Doesn't quite reach the 20-yard line. Fifth return holding, number 59, return team. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Another penalty against Florida State as we thanks very much. Not quite as much tension here between Clemson and Florida State. You almost get the feeling, Brock, like Clemson could just name their number. And this is an eye-opener for Willie Taggart. This Seminoles program, where do they go from here? Francois with a handoff to Patrick. Request Patrick. Picks up five. Well, for me, I think I'm taking DeAndre Francois out of this game. I mean, at, at this point, he has taken such a beating. If you're going to extend your winning streak, and you've had 41 straight years, 41 straight years with a winning record, and you're going to look for a couple more wins over the final four weeks, you're going to have to have number 12 available. And this thing's done. I mean, this thing was done a long time ago, and the beating that he continues, he's on the ground again. That's a third-string linebacker that's getting through and hitting DeAndre Francois on a bubble screen. Chad Smith gets all over DeAndre Francois while they're trying to play quick game, and they have the toughest remaining schedule of any team in FBS, according to our FBI. And they have to find two more wins in there somewhere to get to 6-6. Six and six. 
and have a chance to play a bowl game and avoid a losing season. Another false start. False start. Number 74, offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. How much of this for Willie Taggart and his coaching staff is going to be mental rehabilitation after a loss like this as much as it is physical or strategic? What do you mean after 14 penalties for 110 yards? Getting gashed in the special teams phase, being uncompetitive at the line of scrimmage? Watching Clemson's backups just run up and down the field. Yeah, Bob, I, I think in every single phase with still four really difficult games coming up too. Sean Helton breaking a couple of tackles. The true freshman out to the 30-yard line. Yeah, and I think one of the hardest things is just when you felt like things were turning a little bit after that 15-yard gain, you just think, okay, yeah, the Miami game. You know, that was really just at the end of the game, and we played so well for three quarters, and Wake Forest's final three quarters played so well, and then this happens. Right? You just want that trajectory. You just want that momentum and that energy going the right way. And your number one is your building. Even if it starts horribly, it's once again, DeAndre's on the ground. And it did. I mean, that Sanford game here, obviously the opener against Virginia Tech, it started really bad. But then you felt like you're finding your way just a little bit. And then this clunker. I mean, this absolutely uncompetitive clunker comes. And for your fans, I think for your players, for everybody involved. Take a lot of work to dig out of this thing. Again, DeAndre Francois with no chance. Speed rush from the true freshman, Xavier Thomas. Guys, I'm curious after a game like this, if you're Florida State, do you even watch the tape? Do you go back, maybe watch the first half, or do you just kind of flush a game like this? Well, what's amazing is this was a scoreless game at the end of the first quarter. So, Brock, from your standpoint as a former player, be interested to hear you answer that question. After we come back, and an ovation for DeAndre Francois a moment ago as well, as he was led off the field, and again, it kind of begs the question that you asked earlier, is it worth it, or was it worth it to still have him on no. the field as James Blackman takes over? And James Blackman immediately under assault. He goes down at the 19-yard line. Yeah, that was our guy, Albert Huggins, once again, that just continues to take the life out of this offensive line and anybody around it. I mean, this is... I said earlier, Huggins would start on any other defensive line in the ACC, big-time recruit, and, yeah, that's... That's one way to take care of the little uh, zone read game. <laughs> it's just to annihilate the running back. This is a statement. There is just no question about it. That 2013 game, 51-14, with Jameis and crew... Right, where it was clearly, hey, here's the head of the class, and here's you still chasing us. This is a statement right back at Florida State. Abo Sweeney's son, Will, back to receive the punt, and a flag comes out as he takes a hit after a 46-yard kick. Terry called for targeting. And they're going to take a look in the replay booth. We'll step aside. You knew it was coming. It would be a physical day. It would be a day where he was probably going to get hit and hit often by a very physical, dominating Clemson defense. But beyond Florida State's wildest dreams is Lynn J. Dixon. It's stuffed at the line. Maybe picked up a half yard. There's a lot of proud Seminoles out there. I've heard from some of them via text today. Decades and decades and decades. That 41 years of being winners. And even yesterday asking Cam Akers about it, the running back, saying, yeah, we know that. We know the straight. And we don't want to be the team that's a part of it and seeing that end over four decades. And a loss like this is not only humiliating, but to try to gather back up for the final stretch of the season. Tough. Intended for Garrett Williams is broken up. Check that. Intended for Cannon Smith. 
and you can stream college football all season long on ESPN Plus. So start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNPlus.com. And I believe this game was 0-0 zero, zero, at the end at, of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter. And could have stayed there as well if not for the roughing the kicker penalty on Asante Samuel after Clemson missed a field goal. But that then started four straight touchdown drives. That personal foul was a game changer. There's Kevin Smith. Powers his way for a first down. And I guess I'll answer Allison's question that you teased as well. Do you burn the film or do you watch no, it? No, you have to watch this in year number one. You have to watch that first quarter where you played good enough ball where you were in positions and you had drops and penalties and you 